planetary exploration. How space exploration can answer one of the most pressing questions of all time. Gunter Hasinger, European Space Agency. On November 9th, 1989, when the wall came down, I was in Munich, preparing for the launch of the Rosat satellite. When my wife and I heard the news on the radio, we were in tears of joy the rest of the night. Thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor and pleasure to be with you, um, to stand in front of you. And I'm actually standing here not on behalf of my own, but on behalf of thousands of engineers and scientists all around the world that have uh, produced these breakthroughs. And also thousands of future scientists and engineers who are still not born and who, for whom we are preparing the future. One thing that you have to learn in space is uh, patience. And so we are really talking about generations. And uh, even more, it is a great honor to give you this um, presentation today. So now when you look at the sky, you are on a bright, um, uh, dark night with bright stars. You can see about 6,000 stars with your naked eye. We know that our Milky Way has about 100 billion stars, and we know that there are about 100 billion Milky Ways in the universe, so um, a number which is completely mind-boggling and un not understandable. And then it's clear there's the question, is there life out there? Are we alone? Uh, honestly, I don't believe so. I believe that life is everywhere, and I would like to show you a few techniques how you could uh, test this uh, phenomenon. What we are looking here is actually a star-forming region, a cradle where new stars are born. There is gas around, and the stars are born from this gas. We know that in this gas there are lots of organic molecules, um, and in particular alcohol. There's much more alcohol out there than here down on Earth. <laughs> And um, in the last uh, 15, 20 years, we have learned that life can actually be uh, in concentration somewhere uh, where it is not expected. Um, there can be life in the, deep down in the ocean. There can be life deep down in the glaciers uh, below the, um, the surface in the ice. And there can be life uh, bacteria below the Earth's surface uh, when we dig deep, we are finding bacteria that have never seen life, um, that have never seen the sun. And actually the biomass which is below the Earth's surface is uh, more, is estimated to be more than the biomass above the Earth's surface. So it is clear that life can be in completely different uh, configurations. And there are also different possibilities to search for life out there. We can go to the planets, um, to the um, solar system bodies, and we can dig for life. But we can also look at, for instance, extrasolar planets, uh, at stars, uh, in, in, uh, at planets in other stellar systems. Now, what I want to show you today is the breakthrough uh, in the exploration of Mars um, uh, with the uh, rovers and the assets that we uh, have sent there as uh, humanity. Um, and uh, I would like to start with the Chinese mission um, Tiananmen, uh, which has actually been launched uh, in May uh, last year already. Uh, and this also symbolizes that this enterprise is actually an international global enterprise. Here you see the fairing of the rocket with the Chinese flag, but you can also see a lot of European logos there, including the European Space Agency, my own agency. So even at the get-go, this is actually an international endeavor. Now, um, nobody would have expected that our Chinese colleagues can successfully land a rover on Mars on the first uh, <laughs> trial. And this is the beautiful uh, selfie picture of Tiananmen and Zhu Rong. Uh, actually, they have put down a little camera in front of them, then the rover retreated, and then they made this nice um, uh, video for us. <laughs> now, just um, uh, back to normal. Um, the data from these rovers has to come down to Earth. Uh, they do not have um, uh, an antenna that can send directly to the Earth, so the data actually has to be picked up by satellites which are going around Mars. And um, actually, the European Space Agency has two satellites around Mars which are actually used uh, to send the data from the rovers down. And just two days ago, we have made an experiment to actually catch some of the data from the Chinese rover 
and bring it down to earth. Uh, so it is indeed an international endeavor. But now let me come to the real uh, excitement, and that was the landing of uh, the Perseverance rover. Uh, and I would like to uh, give my shout out to JPL, uh, who have done a great job to do this. The entry balance masses in preparation for parachute deploy and to roll over to give the radar a better look at the ground. Applicate in the cage, shoot the ploy. Now there is the a secret code in this parachute. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration in the velocity. Our current velocity is 430 meters per second at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. There is a secret code in this parachute and that is actually called uh, Dare Mighty Things. That is the, the motto of JPL. Uh, and the, the coding in the red and white colors is more or less a digital image of this um, code. Now, let's go to the next step. This is uh, what is called seven minutes of terror. Uh, seven minutes it takes to bring the rover down to Mars. And this is the last moment uh, when, and unfortunately, it doesn't go. The velocity yes. accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane. This is the moment when maneuver. the rockets are firing to bring the thing down in a very smooth fashion. Then a crane is levering the rover down onto the surface of Mars. And then the final touchdown is really, as you will see, very emotionally uh, when the signal comes down that things have happened. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. And all the world was happy around, not just the JPL colleagues. Now, this was not the first time NASA has brought down a rover successfully, but it was the second time for such a complicated and complex um, uh, investigation. But now, the real breakthrough actually is that this rover is running around on Mars and is uh, drilling into the soil and brings um, samples out of the soil, is collecting those samples, and these samples will then uh, be collected by a European rover that will be launched uh, in the next 10 years or so. It will then br be, be brought down to Earth and we can analyze those samples. And uh, this is a, a movie, I hope I, it will work, no? Um, it, uh, sorry. No, it didn't work. <laughs> Anyhow, so, so you can imagine the rover is drilling into the soil, uh, is bringing um, the sample out, uh, is collecting the samples and then uh, preparing them for uh, the uh, bringing them down to Earth. So this is the real first breakthrough of what we call the Mars Sample Return Mission, which will take um, another uh, generation. Now uh, let me come to the European equivalent. Uh, Europe has uh, prepared a rover which is called... Oh, here, now it comes. Okay, so here you see how things, uh, how it's drilling into the soil. This is the hole. Uh, this is more or less a 10, 20 centimeter long sample, which is then collected into the rover, stored away into the machinery, and then will be dropped somewhere on Mars, where then the next rover will come and bring it um, to the ro rocket. The rocket will be launched, uh, bring the sample to a satellite. The satellite will pick it up and bring it down to Earth. So it's a highly complex um, uh, structure and a huge um, enterprise. This is just the very first um, beginning. Now I want to come to the European rover, which will be launched next year together with Roscosmos, with the Russian colleagues. Uh, this rover has been named Rosalind Franklin because Rosalind Franklin was one in the team of uh, Fra uh, Watson and Crick who have discovered the DNA. She did not get the Nobel Prize for that, but she gets a rover. Um, and this is indeed what we are looking for. We are looking for signs of DNA uh, out there. This would be really the holy grail. Um, now, the difference uh, between the Mars rover from the NASA and our, our ESA rover is that the ESA rover is actually drilling in much deeper into the soil. And the reason for that is that these, the upper layers of the soil are actually sterilized by UV light, by oxidants, by ionizing radiation. So you have to dig in about two meters uh, into the soil in order to be able to find possibly live bacteria. I mean, if, if there are live bacteria like down in the Earth, um, this is our chance. Uh, and so this is a different aspect of tr searching for life, which is um, uh, the European Space Agency has focused on. 
And now a completely different uh, technique, and this is um, very exciting. Uh, we will, on 18th of December this year, launch the largest space telescope ever. Uh, it's a big NASA mission where ESA uh, is a partner. Uh, the, the satellite will be launched by a European rocket from Kourou. And it's a six-meter telescope. It's six times, uh, three times larger in each dimension, so about 10 times larger in collecting area than the famous Hubble Space Telescope. And this telescope will be able to look at extrasolar planets, at planets which are in other solar systems. We know about 4,000 of such planets. And if such a planet is going in front of its star, like what you see here in this picture, then the starlight is shadowed a little bit, and from the different shadowing in the different frequency spans, uh, when you spread this out in a spectrum, you can actually look at the fingerprints of um, mo molecules in the atmosphere of these exoplanets. And therefore, uh, there is a chance that we might be able to find so-called biomarkers, um, life uh, markers in these uh, atmospheric um, structures of exoplanets. Now let me come to uh, a dream which um, we have developed for the future. Uh, in the systems of the, of the giant planets of both Jupiter and Saturn, there are these so-called icy moons. Um, one of those moons is called Europa, uh, the other one is Ganymede. This is the moon uh, Enceladus in the, in the uh, Saturn system. And this moon has been visited uh, by the um, uh, Huygens and Cassini mission. Uh, and uh, what people have discovered is that there are geysers that are coming out of the south pole of this moon. We believe that there is a liquid ocean below the ice layer. And what we believe um, to see is actually uh, hydrothermal vents which are coming um, from the ocean floor of this moon and then breaking through the ice wall of the upper layer. <laughs> And this is actually expected to be very similar to the so-called hydrothermal vents, uh, the black smokers uh, in, on the ocean floor on the Earth. And we know today that there is a, a zillions of different life forms are um, isolated there. And, and there is a possibility that life has actually started to form in these hydrothermal vents. So if you have hydrothermal vents in, on Earth and we have them on Enceladus, there is a possibility that there is life in this Enceladus ocean, and not just bacteria, but maybe even lobster. So we have to see. <laughs> and so we are dreaming of a mission to Enceladus, uh, which unfortunately will take a whole generation. It takes 10 years to go there. It takes 10 years to come back. Um, we are dreaming of a mission where we can land a little uh, rover or lander. And this is still science fiction. <laughs> But um, the future is coming towards us. And uh, what we are dreaming of is that we are sending this little rover that um, we bring an, an ice core sample back to Earth and that we can actually analyze this piece of ice and uh, can then see whether there are bacteria in there. And the dream would be to find DNA uh, which is either um, has a chirality similar to the DNA on Earth, or it could have a chirality which is different to the DNA on Earth. And now what is coming here towards us is not this lander, but it is actually little U22. It's a model of the Chinese rover that the Chinese have put on the far side of the moon two years ago. Uh, just to give you the feeling it is difficult, but it is possible, and it will be done. Thank you very much.